I love this little stand. Yeah, because if, if you, I mean, you know, if you've had a few and you try and just bang that down on the table, good night, Vienna. <laughs>
I do love a crisp. So having a crisp with a bit of novelty, I'm all over it. I am all over that like a like a something that's all over something. Pour, dust, shake. Let's come back to it in a bit. Look at them. <laughs> Put you over there for now, though. Let's lob you over there. You can sit there for a while. Let's get into this beer, though. So, Quack. What are we talking about with the Quack Blonde? So we're obviously talking from the Quack Brewery in Belgium, and we're talking, people, 7.4%. So not one to be taken lightly. Neither is the Quack. Neither is the Quack Rouge. Basically, Quack is telling you it's strong. Simple as that. It just is. So more likely going to be a... I did a little bit of a teapot thing there. More likely going to be a, a supper than a swiller. This little beauty is the Blonde Ale. Yeah, 7.4%. Now, my last review was the Left Summer. So that is an Abbey Ale Blonde Beer, and that came in at 5.2%. So this, yeah, a couple of percent even more than that. Now that left summer, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole keg. It was a little pleasure. And it didn't taste, I don't think, 5.2%. It tasted refreshing. It had a slightly thinner taste than the actual left blonde, which is an absolute beauty. Beauty on there. So I am gonna obviously be comparing this to the likes of that left summer and the left blonde. So that left summer was £37.90. This one, being that higher ABV, you would expect to pay that bit more. And you do at £41.90. So four whole Snickers more. <laughs> hey, that's a fair whack in terms of keggage. So this needs to hit the spot. Apparently having aromas of pear, banana, and bready malts. Delicate bitterness, but also the honey in there gives it that bit of sweetness as well. How does it pour? How does it look? All questions that shall be answered, people. So, first up, let's have a look at that keg. Let's do the pour. I'll bring it in. We'll see what it looks like. I'll have a sippy suppy sue. Tell you what I think to it. And then I'm going to crack into some snackage. Let's go, people. So I've got it set to seven degrees. That is what's recommended on the app. Yeah, and also, please people, download that app, yeah? Don't have to be a pro owner, just download the app. And at the moment, through the summer, 15% off your keggage, yeah? Well worth doing. Anyway, let's have a laugh at me trying to pour a beer into this glass. Right, let's put that there. Let's put it like that, ready to be stood in there. Right, let's go. Can't even remember how I used this before. And if you meant to just bang it straight in, I think you meant to, someone said to me, I'm sure you did, just bang it straight in rather than doing the tilty-tilty. Just feels wrong not doing a tilty-tilty. I'm doing a tilty-tilty. That ain't bad. Beep, beep. I'm not unhappy with that. Now, I do remember now, and I, it was lucky, I remembered while it was being poured. I don't know how to get it in there. There we go. Um, as it's coming up through that bit there, you're kind of thinking, whoa there, steady on, Neddy. And it kind of like comes, and it's, it, you feel like pulling out. But don't. Keep it in. Keep it down, yeah? Keep on going. Let it come through that little bit of a funnel. Come to the top and just keep on going. Look at that. It's a beauty. Let's bring it in. All I'm saying, people, is oh my word. I reckon I can fit a little tippy toppy two in there, but look at them bubs. Look at them bubs in that. Hey? Steady she goes. Look at them. I've got to be honest, I didn't expect that many bubs in that but a lovely golden colour. Absolute belter. And look at that foam head there. Beautiful white foam head. Lovely golden colour. It's got some bubs kicking off. That's the most bubs I've seen in a long time. This glass probably lends to that. It's 
worth it, innit? That's an experience. I went to a bar in Leicester, yeah? Barbara Sells, I think it was called. And that, you had to pay 10 quid for this. It was a deposit, you got it back, as long as you didn't nick the glass. But you can see why. Right, let's get out of Tippy Toppy too. And <laughs> let's have a sippy suppy Sue. Hey, look at that. It's a pure experience in the bar when you've got a proper glass like that. Proper glass for the beer that you've got. It's just, it's just good. You know what I mean? It's worth doing now and again. Look at that. Just goes under there nicely. <laughs> There's not much more that can be said. Look at that head. Huh? That's a beauty. That looks like a glass full of goodness. It really does. Probably not after about four of them. That, that's something you shouldn't do. Right. I love this little stand. Yeah, because if, if you, I mean, you know, if you've had a few and you try and just bang that down on the table, good night, Vienna. Right. Lovely white head. Lovely clear golden colour. Absolutely beautiful. What I'm saying to you is this now. I'm telling you. Cheers, perfect drafters. Let's give her a sippy suppy sue. Cheers. I went in full lager style, didn't I? Gulping away. I said right at the start, it's a sipper, not a swiller. Let's go again. It's just quality. Following that left summer, I've got to say, the power of this, it does hit you. That ABV, you can straight away, you taste it and you're like, you can, as you breathe out, you know this is a higher ABV. And also you've read it on the keg. Lovely mouthfeel. Yeah, beautiful. It looks more carbonated than it tastes. They're slow moving, bubs. I'm sure that glass adds to that kind of carbonation kind of effect. But it's not going to gas you up, that's not. And you don't want it to. You want to sip that. You want to enjoy it. It's a little pleasure. you got your stand there like that. Just, you know, bobbing on now and again. Sit back. Have a look. Because it's one to be appreciated. Triple Camulet. That, that springs to mind in terms of taste. It just does. Not quite as strong as that. I think I think the triple camulets or carmulet, I don't know how you say it. I've said many a thing wrong. I'm not gonna start correcting myself now, although I almost just did. I think that was eight percent. And you know, this is what, seven point four, so a bit less. And actually you've gotta be careful with that triple camulet. You just have. Very smooth, very quaffable. For a 7.4 percenter, that is quaffable. Moorish, even. Definitely got a bit of that banana about it. There's a bit of banana in it. Not a lot. Bready malts, yes. Pear, I think it said pear. Not sure the pear's there. I'll have some snicky snacky snoo. And then what I'll do is kind of place this amongst those other kegs that I've just mentioned. But that, I'm telling you right now, that's quality. That is one to be appreciated. It really is. I reckon I've got some work to do with this snicky snacky snoo, so I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna do it. Let's go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've picked two flavors to go for with this. I might have these again in the next review and just pick another two flavors, eh? Yeah? Simple as that. So, I've gone for a Nuchin onion, because I fancy a bit of cheese and onion. That's one of my favorite flavors. You know, if it's just the standard every day, you know, I've got my sandwiches, having a lunch, I might well pick cheese and onion to have with it. I like salt and vinegar, I do, but I'm just thinking with these, that's a little bit too close to salt and shake. I want to try something a bit different. I'm going for Nuchin onion. 
And then the chip shop curry flavor. Why not? Why not give that a go? Right. So I got me bags, got me shake bags, got me crisps. Let's get stuck in, people. How easy are these going to be to open? Oh, hello, tiger. We're in. We're in. Just got to get an handful. Pop them in the old bag. Lovely. A little bit like a chip shop, isn't it? Feels like a bit like a chip shop bag. Just popping them in. How many shall I put in there? Just, just a few. Just a few. That's for one of the flavours. Pop a few in here for a different flavour. I mean, you could go mad on this, couldn't you? You could. But the idea is, you see, because this is a 500 gram bag, like I said, you get this, and then there is like tubs. I mean, I've got my own Tupperware tub, like you saw. But you can get tubs off the website, store them in your tubs, then you can have as many as you want at any point. Don't even have to be a 30 gram bag or a 35 gram bag. It can be any size you want. It's a little bit like the perfect draft of crisps. You know, you could have a little beer if you wanted a little beer. You can, you know, or a big beer. Here you could have just a few crisps or many crisps. Whatever your mood, you've got the right level of crispage to have. But how good do they taste? I'm going to just have one without any flavour. Might be a bit of an illegal move. So sorry, Spudos, if it is an illegal move. But I want to just see how good of a crisp it is without anything on them. Nice crunch. Good plain flavour. That doesn't make any sense. But there's no saltiness to them. And I think that's good. They are like a totally stripped of flavour of anything kettle chip. That's what they're like. Yeah. And that's interesting because like, they almost straight away tell me we're better than walkers. They're not plain because always you think plain, ready salted, but they are just neutral crisps. Right, what I'm going to do, like I say, is I'm going to put them in a bit of Tupperware. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want me doing this after three or four quack blondes. That would be ridiculous. It's a good job we've got more Tupperware in the house. You can underestimate a 500 gram bag of crisps. You can. Not in a fight, but just kind of volume. Fighting a bag of crisps? What's the world come to? I think that is my favorite use ever of a bit of Tupperware. Normally it's got like, you know, some leftover spag ball in there, which I'm never gonna use. Never gonna use. So we've got two shake bags with, I don't know, 15 grams a piece of crisps. I've just made that up. I don't know how much grammage there is in there. We're going in for the nooch and onion for a start. Right, here we go. Like I say, it's got like a superhero spud on the package. I like him. Let's give it a bit of a shnifty. Woohoo! I tell you what, that smells all right. All right, giving myself a nice little I don't know how much to put in. I suppose it's how how flavoursome you want it, isn't it? Spud dust going in. Looks very orangey. Nice, right. Okay. Pop you there. It's salt and shake on a whole new level. I mean, it really does feel like you're being, you're part of the process, yeah? Right. Oh, I'll tell you what, that has worked beautifully in terms of dust things. Just lobbing them in there like that. I think just because I put a handful in, shook it about. Right. I've got a three crisp grab. Nice, in between the thumb the index finger and Peter Pointer. Snicky snacky snoo. Here we go. Shut the door.
There's a flavour, good flavour. That nooch and onion's good. Um, but there's, a, there's some crisps, what is it? Oh. There's, so, there's more cheese than onion. It does say nooch and onion, but I'm sure there's just some cheese crisps only that, that taste just like that, and I love them. Nice. That's a good flavour. Mmm. Good stuff. He's on there again, look. Old matey, old super spudo. Yeah, got a little heart in the O as well. Loving it. Compost me. Yeah, spudos.com. That's a nice little shake bag. That's a nice tasting crisp. I'm happy with that. There are some cheese crisps that taste like that, but I can't put my finger on it. Nice. And the quality of those crisps are good. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, it's not incredibly cheap. It's $9.99 for that 500 gram bag. Then you get your spud dust. Now your spud dust, that comes in two different kind of sizes. I'll bob them up just here on the screen or something. So you got a 65 gram spud dust and they're 399. Then you got a 210 gram spud dust and that's 799. So that's your flavor right there. So there your spud dust kind of almost like your, you know how you get the herbs and stuff like that in the shops. You know, your, your rosemary and your basil and stuff like that. You know, it's in those kind of tubs. Now, what I've been sent there, you know, is your 500 gram bag of crisps, your shake bags, and then your sachets. And that's $9.99. That, that gives you a very good introduction into what spudos are all about. What they say is that they're heavier than walkers, but lighter than kettle chips. That is a fantastic way of positioning the taste of their crisps. That is spot on. It has got the kind of kettle chip style crunch, but not to the extent almost of kettle chips. So they're right, but they are that bit better than a Walker's. And you've got that control of the flavor. I'm loving it. I'm loving the concept. I'm loving getting involved with just like, you know, getting the dust on there, having a go at, you know, banging different flavors on. And look, you know, you got this spud dust stuff. What stops you banging those on some chips or something? Huh? Nothing. Nothing. It's basically like seasoning. Put it on a roast potato, maybe. Bit of oil over it, some spud dust. Bang it in. Flavor the skin. There's options. There's options. Anyway, let's give this chip shop curry one a bit of a blast. But before I do, I'll have a sippy suppy sue. Chip shop curry. <laughs> Only lost a bit of flavour in there. Don't want to. It is a very fine dust. That. That purely does smell like chip shop curry. If you literally got a pot of it, just went like that. Get your schnez all in there. That's what it is. Right. Let's shake you about a bit. Felt I've uh, got to do a bit of head nodding for a bit of shaking. Right, there we go. I love that shake. I'll tell you what, that shaking really does, it just does it. All right, few there. Another three crisp grab. When I bang in, I basically always get three. Ooh. These are good. These are good. When I looked at their site, I thought that's expensive. But you can make them last over time, can't you? You can, you know, store them away, grab out what you want, shake them about a bit. I mean, yeah, you ain't got to use their bags really, have you? A bag's a bag. You know, although they are very nicely presented bags with my mate on there doing a peace sign. He's a super spud, but you could use your own bags. 
And like I say, you can take out what you want. On my last review, I think I had those Morrisons rip off kind of um, Max Strong's on my last one. I did. It was the Chinese um, takeaway star one. Salt and pepper Chinese takeaway Max Strong ripoffs from Morrisons. And it's a big old bag. I left about three or four crisps in the bottom of that bag thinking at least I haven't smashed the whole bag to myself. Yeah, that's good of me. That's my problem. I open up a bag, doesn't matter if it's a grab bag or a blooming snack size beauty. You know, I'm firing them down. Like I say, just for good measure, I left a few, but it was a token gesture. I smashed the bag, really. And shouldn't do it. You've got to watch out, especially when you've got the calorific pints you're having with it as well. You've got to be careful. You know, you're doing couch to 5K before you know it. And you need to. Because you can't be firing down snackage and beer and look all right. You can't keep doing it. You can't. Moderation. It's almost helping you moderate your intake. That's why he's a super spud. I remember now, when it gets to this kind of bit, it does a bit of a glug glug when it gets to your face concerns you just don't be concerned stay at the same kind of angle as you're drinking and everything's fine mm. right right rateage that i think i gave that left summer didn't i i gave that an eight or it was an 8.5 i think i gave it an 8.5 Different situations call for, you know, different beers. And if it was a summer barbecue, got mates round even, I'd go for the left summer, got to be honest. They're more likely to quaff it, same as me, throughout the day. If you're having one or two at night, just as a very pleasurable sup, not a swill, that, that takes it. Because that's beautiful. It really is Moorish, nice, but you don't want to smash three or four pints of it. You basically want one or two, and you want to appreciate it. You do want to sip it. You want to sit back, look at it on the stand and go, yeah, I'm not having a standard beer tonight. I'm having a bit of class. Class in a quality glass. That is quack blonde. It's very full tasting. You can taste the ABV, especially when you breathe out afterwards. It's very close to the left blonde, but does it edge it? I think it does, just, just for me. I'm gonna say like left summer, left blonde, this, then I'll bang in like a triple camulet. I know that's more of an Abbey beer, but it tastes very similar. So I've gone really in that kind of, <laughs> I have gone in the ABV kind of ranking. But like I say, it's situational. That's how I would rank it if it was just a one or two night, just of a week night, and I want to taste a nice quality beer. A little bit like the equivalent of having a nice glass of wine. This is a nice beer, a quality beer. It ain't a Madri. I'm not sitting at a bar firing down Madri or a... Moretti or a Peretti or a Peroni, none of that. I'm sitting there and I'm going, wait a minute, let me just taste. Let me taste the flavours. I'm having a sip. Mmm, that's what I'm doing. That kind of thing. Yeah. So that's where I'm positioning that. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it also an 8.5. Gonna give it an 8.5. I think I gave triple Camulet. I'm not sure if I didn't give that a 10 actually. But yeah, I'm giving that an 8.5. It's gorgeous. It's a lovely, lovely beer and it's one to be appreciated. Spudos, whoa. That, <laughs> fantastic. I love the whole concept of it. The retro part of me is, and my missus just gave me a retro quiz. Right, and it says like you score a point for everything that you haven't done. 
And I literally, out of, I think it was about 20 questions, I scored one point, yeah? It was things like, have you ever watched a VHS? Yes, I have, yeah? I even remember the Scotch VHS adverts, you know? Re-record, don't feed away. Re-record, don't feed, that old, the skeleton bloke, remember him? Yeah, he were knocking about. Brilliant, yeah? Although the tapes did fade. Especially when he was rewinding over a certain bit again and again and again. Then, then the other things like, have you ever listened to a cassette? Did you ever own a Walkman? Have you ever listened to vinyl? The only thing on that full 20 question quiz that I hadn't done was typed on a typewriter. And that was only like half a point of not done because I've tapped a typewriter. I've just never used it in earnest to write a letter. Yeah, good quiz. Yeah, so the retro part of me is looking at that Spudos, thinking Salt and Shake was an absolute beauty of an idea. And I'm thinking that with these as well. The different flavors, and I do hope they bring out some even more, you know, brilliant flavors. I'm well looking forward to the prawn cocktail ones. I think I'll do that on the next review. Prawn cocktail and salt and vinegar, yeah. Salt and vinegar is one of my all-time favourites. I don't know why I didn't have it. I want to really try the flavours now. I do. They're that good. The crisp is quality. They're good. Spudos. What am I giving you? I'm giving you a nine. I'm giving them a nine because I love the concept. I'm loving the kind of retro feel of that. I really am. Check them out. Spudos.com. Happy days. Happy days. I do love a crisp. And that, just a bit different, isn't it? Ritual 9, I've got that in stock. That's what's coming up next. Oh, it might not. I don't know, I need to put another order in. I need to have that lost lager at some point. Yeah. Anyway, people, whatever you're doing this weekend, make it an absolute beauty. Make it a belter. Enjoy, have a few beers with a few mates. But for now, perfect drafters, what I'm saying to you is this. Cheers. Have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>